Okay, so uh, I suppose not too many people have watched it. I encourage you to watch that. Uh, it is included in our uh, YouTube playlist. Um, so, uh, uh, all right, good job. <laughs> Thank you for watching it. All right. So, um, so I encourage you to watch that because um, everything that I give you are, are, are building blocks. So uh, at certain type, uh, certain uh, certain times during certain lectures, you are going. You're not going to get the whole big picture of things. That's that's what pretty much every uh, branch of science is about. Sometimes you get to uh, uh, you know, um, sometimes you get to get to 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 to, uh, to you get presented uh, certain building blocks. Uh, it involves understanding the concepts, and then slowly and slowly uh, things are being put together in the big picture. And uh, the beauty of that hold of the whole thing is that there, is, you know, the, the big picture. There's no one big picture. There is uh, there are various scenarios that you can use those building blocks to create different things. So um, um, last time we have talked about uh, uh, types of triggering. Uh, what else did we talk about? We talked about uh, types of multivibrators. Okay. Um, now, uh, there's a reason why we talked about that. Uh, the reason is that uh, what we're going to talk about today uh, is going to, if you, if you understand the concept of that, it is going to give you um, the, the uh, better understanding. On, uh, on on what we're talking about as we go along. So please, if sometimes something you know, it, it, I wouldn't say boring, but um, you know, just just to give you an example, uh, years ago I used to uh, belong to a judo club, and we wanted to, uh, uh, we were eager to go and do those throws, but uh, for the longest time we were not practicing any techniques that involves throwing people and being thrown around but we practiced a lot of uh, how to fall down okay and that was a long long process of properly falling down uh, and then we got to uh, uh we got to practice the, you know, the, the stuff that we wanted so that's the same thing here all right so uh, <clears throat> uh all right so what we have here is we do have an end gate okay uh and then uh it is connected to a probe. Also, I encourage you to watch that because bit by bit, I'm showing you how to use something that is called a multi-sim. All right, this is a multi-sim uh, simulation here. Uh, you have uh, the, we, we do have in our college, uh, in homework labs, the multi-sim is installed as well as the open lab room. Open lab by me, uh, by saying open lab is, I mean the, the room that is open to, uh, to all of us. To, uh, to enter freely and uh, there is equipment there. I, I think I showed you that, all right? If not, uh, ask me and I'll tell you where that is. Okay? So those rooms, homework labs and that, they have the multi-sim installed and I really, really recommend that uh, you would uh, familiarize yourself with this. This video here, this little half an hour video, 26 minutes, it shows you the little, you know what, it's good enough for you to start and, 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 and understand the concept of how the software works. But anyway, so we have an end gate here, and over here we have something that's called a probe. That's a, that's a device that is uh, proprietary to well, pretty much software here. Um, there's no uh, some kind of like a lollipop looking thing that you can connect to your breadboard, but you can have that uh, probe uh, instead of connecting an LED. So imagine this is an LED, but we just don't have that uh, uh, connections, those hardwired connections through a resistor and so on. It's just going to give you the status of the uh, of whatever it is. And if you, and this one here looks like it works like this. It's if it lights up, that means the um, uh, this point right here is considered to be one or I don't know, logic one. So whatever the levels might be, so it's going to be closer to five volts. Uh, and uh, if it's not on, uh, it is going to represent a logic level of zero, okay? So what do we have? We have those three probes. One is monitoring what's on the output of the end gate here. And the two of these, the, these two uh, are monitoring what is on the actual input of this end gate right here. And we have an inverter connected and both of those inputs, one 
straight connected to a pull-up system that, uh, that I have established. And we went over those with the pull-up system. If the switch is open, this point right here is pulled up to high, okay? So it's high. Uh, so um, uh, the other input of the end gate is connected not directly, but through an inverter, right? So in this kind of scenario, uh, and when we open and close the switch, and this one here this is key equals space. That means that uh, you can operate the switch by pressing a space bar on your keyboard. Right? That's a pretty convenient thing. Uh, watch this video, you will see what I mean. All right? This is uh, not the actual simulation. This is the YouTube uh, portion of it that I'm playing. So I'm not able to operate that live. But once I press the play button, uh, you know, we're going to see that operate. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the audio from here for a little bit, for a second here. Okay, so this is bleeding through. And we're just going to have it silent, uh, but I will just uh, I will just comment on what's going on here. All right, so let's keep, uh, let's press play and see what happens. All right. I close the switch, all right? When we close the switch, what do we have? Uh, at this point, we have a uh, low or high when the when the switch is closed. What do we what do we see here? Switch is closed. This point is it low or is it high? Fix it low. Do we have, do we have any highs? Low, Aditya. There you go. It is low because it's directly connected to the ground. So that that's correct. So let's consider the inputs. Well, the status of these probes is going to show us uh, what is high, what is low. And it's just, kind of, it's just kind of look at it if it makes sense. All right, so this is low and that is going to be carried right directly to the input of this end gate. And yes, this is going to be low and the probe indicates that it is low. This one here is, well, it's connected to the same point. So it is low, all right. Now it goes through the inverter. What does inverter do? Inverter inverts. So it's going to make high out of this. Okay. Uh, so we have high and low applied to the input of this end gate. And by remembering uh, the truth table of an uh, end gate, uh, and just as the pretty much name suggests, uh, you have to have uh, input one and input two and input two high in order to produce a high output, right? So no matter what we do, can't win with this one, can we? No matter what we do, we're not going to have that um, one, one ever. Or is that true? Is there any time that we're going to have both ones if in, in, in this scenario here? Are we going to have two ones? Let's see here. Let's keep playing and what's, uh, let's see what's going to happen. Watch the switch opening and closing and watch the output of this, uh, uh, of this end gate here. All right. I'm going to press play again. So the timeline continues. And uh, pretty soon I'm going to open the switch and let's see what happens. This is uh, on YouTube. I'm explaining what, what is what. All right. So just uh, be patient with this thing here. Right. And where's the mouse? Come on, come on. There we go. Did you see what happened? Right, I'm going to back it up a little bit. There you go. I'm going to back it up a little bit. There we go. So when I open the switch, what happens? We see the LED on the output blink for a brief time. All right. What happens when we close it? Oh, when we close it, nothing happens, all right? Yeah, we open, there's a blink, and then we close it, there's no blink. We open, there's a blink, close it, there's no blink. There we go. Okay. That's enough of the blinking. So uh, 
That's a delay. Somebody's saying that's a delay. Vic is saying that's a delay. Okay, you're on the right track. So anybody can explain what's happening uh, here. Why is it? Because when this diode or the probe, uh, sorry, I'm using the wrong mouse here. When this uh, LED right here or the probe, this output goes high. So obviously at some point, for some brief moment, there these two inputs are going to go high. So um, I think Vic already knows that, all right? So, uh, so what's, uh, what's happening here? Does everybody understand that? Can anybody explain? It can go on voice, it's okay. Nobody? All right. Okay, <laughs> people are shy today. Come on, go on. Chime in anytime you want, all right? If it's too much, I'll let you know. Uh, okay, so what's happening uh, here when we close the switch, all right? What is the status of this whole system? The switch is closed. Um, Let's see if we can get back to the point that the switch is closed. All right, here is the switch is closed. So we have a one here and we have a zero here. And of course, that is going to give us the zero on the output of this AND gate. So uh, there is something that we, and then when we open the switch for a brief moment, uh, this thing blinks. So that means at some point the, for that blink time, there is one and one here. Right. And if you scalp it uh, with uh, kind of like a one-shot uh, capture um, uh, sequence on the oscilloscope, you're going to see uh, that uh, um, that these two are ones for a brief minute. That's the last flow of power in the circuit before it goes to ground. Yeah. But why does it? Uh, why is it happening only when we open that, not when we close it? Okay. So that's uh, that's true. And there is another true that is it only happens when we open. Okay, let's analyze this. What happens when we open uh, here the switch? This point goes from low to high. Okay. This pin is already high, okay? And when we open the switch, this pin immediately goes to high. But because there is an inverter here, and in reality, what is happening, that the propagation delay applies. What's a propagation delay? It's a delay that happens, it's a short period of time, it's at the time that the signal takes, the output takes the time to react to what's on the input, or um, actually it's more, more like a, 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 the, the, the input uh, takes time to go from high to low or from low to high, and ideally it should be at time zero, it should take no time, but nothing happens as on paper. And the reality of things is that it takes uh, you know, a short you know, nanosecond to go up, all right? So in that short period of time, because this input goes, this input goes high right away. This input stays high until this device, which is inverted, processes that signal. So in that time, both of them are high. And then of course, it reaches its state that it should be because this reacts properly and it's going to stay low when you open the switch. So you're going to have just a reverse condition here. Right? So, um, uh, so that's uh, you know, uh, the propagation delay is, uh, you know, it could be an obstacle uh, in when you're building circuitries, or the propagation delay can be used to your advantage if you know how to use it, if you understand how things work. Okay. So, 
this circuit can be used as uh, two things, right? It could be used as a pulse generator because we're generating a pulse. And what is a pulse? It's a signal that goes, that changes its state for a brief moment of time. It's a pulse. We're not changing the level of the signal because if we change the level of the signal, we make it go high and it stays high or we make it go low and it stays low. That's changing the level of the signal. But what's a pulse? A pulse is like this. It goes blink, right? blink, just like that. So a pulse is a signal goes up or down or changes its state for a brief moment. Right? So in this case, it could be considered as a pulse generator. It's going to generate a pulse. And what kind of a pulse? It's going to be a pulse that goes from zero to high. Right? So by operating the switch, we can create a pulse. That's good. But it also, it also can be used as a pulse detector. Right? How is it that it can be used as a pulse detector? And what kind of a part of the pulse detector? Remember when we studied uh, last time, we studied the input of a device and uh, I call it the black box uh, because it doesn't matter what the device is. We were concentrating not on the operation of the device. We're concentrating on the particular input of the device. How is that input going to react? And it can react in multiple ways. It can react that it is going to, the, 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 the input is going to be active when the signal applied to it is high, and as long as the signal is high, then the device is going to be active, or the device could be made in such a way that when the signal goes low, then as long as the signal goes low, then device is active, okay? So this, uh, this first instance would be the, uh, the device, the input would be active high, or the, device would have the input that the input would be active low okay so in this case are we talking about um, this whole system is it active high or is it active low <clears throat> anybody can can anybody uh, or is there something else mm, i think it's active low active low okay anybody active high well, here is what I'm going to tell you. Okay, so uh, VIX is low, okay. all right? Um, well, it is not active high or it's not active low. What it is detecting is the, um, it is detecting the positive change. When the signal goes from zero to high in this point right here, when the signal changes its state, because it's, we get a blink when we open the switch. When we open the switch, this point goes from zero to high. So it's reacting to the edge of the pole. So it's edge triggered, right? So it's not uh, high or low we're talking about, we're talking about the edge triggering. So it is going to react when the signal goes from zero to high, right? from low to high. At that moment, this system is going to react. When it goes from high to low, it is not going to react. Right? Um, yeah, it's not going to react because that thing just stays off. So it only detects the positive edge. Now, if you, um, if you imply different parts here, and I will let you research that, how is it that you can make it active low, all right? Because it is possible. So in that case, this system could be also used as a pulse detector. And what kind of a pulse detector? It's a specific pulse detector, a, specific, a pulse that goes from low to high. It's going to detect that, right? So 
it is going to detect the pulse and it's going to generate a pulse on its own. So it could be considered as a pulse generator or it could be considered as a pulse detector. Okay, okay. so this is what's happening. Please watch that video. It's, well, you know, I made it for you, right? Uh, I know how to uh, help these things operate. Uh, you're the guys who are paying for me to <laughs> give you that information. So use it, all right? Um, okay, so now, um, what do we have here? We have a, um, based on the last time that we did, we have a little lesson here that is called latches and flip-flops. You just turn that thing on and we're going to turn this thing on and we're going to turn this thing on here, okay? There we go, All right? Now I'm just gonna make myself a little bit smaller here. There we go. So now you can see me and you can see this, uh, uh, this presentation here. So today we're going to give you the intro on uh, the latches and flip-flops. And uh, next time we'll see each other, we will expand on that using some uh, examples. I will, uh, I'll prepare some circuits and we're going to analyze them just so the information that I give you is going to be retained a little bit better. All right. So what do we have here? Um, that's the lesson plan, so to speak. Alternative logics, we're gonna take a look at logic symbols. Uh, we will talk about that, something that we already talked about, synchronous versus asynchronous operation. And we're gonna have terminology, active high versus active low. Uh, rising edge, we just did that with that circuit. That will be the right, the, the, that circuit is detecting the rising edge of the pulse versus falling edge. Uh, there are also circuits that detect, uh, uh, you know, a falling edge. So edge, uh, so that is, it's just like edge trigger versus level trigger. Uh, so um, uh, this system that we had, it was edge triggered and it was a positive edge triggered, okay? Um, now, if you describe the input of that, how would you, if this is the black box, right? That's the black box, which means it's a device that is performing whatever it does. It does what it does, okay, when it wants to, or when we tell it to, right? So when we have a positive edge trigger, so this would be the input that's going in here, right? And when we want to describe a positive edge trigger, that this input is triggered on the, excuse me, on the edge, and it's detecting the positive edge. What would, how would this look like? Anybody? From the last lesson. What do I have to put here? A triangle. There we go. That thing tells us that this is a positive edge. This is the edge trigger and it's a positive edge trigger because there is no inversion bubble here. And if there was an inversion bubble here, like that, we would talk about this device as negative edge trigger. So if there's a pulse, let's see here, there's a pulse. Uh, this here would um, react to this part of the signal. Right? And if the inversion bubble was not there, this device would react to this part of the signal. Okay, cool. And then there's the other scenarios that we talked about. Okay. Um, let's just keep going with this, what we have. So I can let you go in time so you could go to your next class. I think I got the timing figured out pretty much right now uh, with, uh, with all these classes here. All right, so uh, applications, uh, edge detection. So that's basically what we just uh, saw on that uh, example that I gave you, it will be the edge detection circuit, right? Positive edge detection circuit. Um, uh, switching the, uh, you know, switch the bouncing. Uh, it can be imp uh, implemented with switch the bouncing. Uh, if it just, I'm not gonna tell you how, you should know by now. If you don't, uh, then just uh, let me know, I would rather, spend some time uh, uh, with you guys to, uh, to answer a question than 
thinking that you know and I can keep going with uh, with the material, right? Because you know that can get you lost pretty uh, uh, pretty pretty quickly there. Right? Uh, so counters and frequency dividers, um, we are going to talk about that today as well briefly and the storage elements uh, such as memory okay well okay let's uh, let's go here latches and flip-flops uh, all right so this would be the alternative logic gates uh, uh, so the basic logic gates that we have done is the and or not and, and or nor changes on the input states uh, causes immediate change to the outputs and the device has no memory all right, as long as, uh, so that's just the basic logic gates. Well, not a big philosophy. Uh, whatever happens on the input, the, the, the device or the gate uh, is basically reacting to it and it's just uh, immediately giving us the results and it retains no memory whatsoever of what was done to it, all right? A latch of a or a flip-flop is a circuit that, okay, well, it is made out of made up out of assembly of gates. Usually, yeah, it could be all. It could actually be also made out of transistors, but it's easier to make out of gates. Well, the gates are made out of transistors. Um, um, yeah. So, um, uh, but for the simply simplicity of things, it is made uh, out of uh, assembly of gates. It is a, okay, so here's the thing that we talked about uh, last time. It is a bistable multivibrator. What does that mean? What's a bistable multivibrator? First of all, what's a multivibrator? Anybody remembers? All right, it has two stages, one or zero. Cool, all right, now we can keep going. It's a device, oops, uh, back, yeah. Shift F5, all right? So it's a device that has two stable states of the output, which means we can tell that device to go high and stay there, or we could tell the device to go low and stay there. So that's a bistable multivibrator. Just a multivibrator, it's a, it, it just gives us the information that it's a device that will change from high to low. And how? It could be a astable multivibrator, it could be bistable multivibrator, or it could be monostable one okay <clears throat> all right so a large is a bistable multivibrator so that tells us that there's a device that switches from high to low we can make it switch from high to low or low to high and whatever the stage we're going whatever happens whether the output switches from high to low or from low, we can tell that output to stay there and that is going to become one of the states that you can stay in, all right? Uh, stores the state of the information, all right? So what does that mean? We can make it go up or high and stay there, and we can tell it that whatever else happens on the inputs, don't react, okay? You're going to keep, you're going to remember that state and until we tell you to do something else. So that's basically, you know, retaining the memory of whatever it is, right? Um, okay, so uh, so that's the simplest way of putting it. Has one or more control inputs and one or two outputs. Right, keep that in the back of your mind. Okay. The output state changes based on the input signals and the previous state of the output. Also keep that in the back of your mind. In general, the word latch is mainly used for storage elements while the flip-flop for clocked or synchronous devices. As we go along, this thing is going to make more sense. Uh, so um, 
after this, I'm going to upload this uh, thing. So quickly, alternative logic symbols. Uh, we're going to get the same results, whether we're going to, whether we have this uh, end gate just like that. So the result is going to be A or, and sorry, A and B, right? Or by the properties that, uh, that uh, the Boolean properties uh, that you studied uh, earlier on before I came on, uh, you can just uh, come up with this equivalent equation, which is going to come up to the same thing, all right? This here is A or B. And then if you have the inversion bubbles uh, here, it is also going to give you A or B. So the inputs here is going to give you the same uh, output uh, in both cases. And here's this, and here's that, and here's the other thing, all right? Uh, so just uh, <laughs> uh, download the, uh, please download the um, posted notes when it's available. And uh, just, just look at it and analyze. It's going to make sense if you analyze this whole thing, all right? All right, active logic gates. When an input or output has no inversion bubble, then uh, it's said to be active high, okay? Right. When the input or the output has an inversion bubble, then it's said to be active low. Right, so on the regular AND gate, this one here, these two inputs, are they active high or low? Well, obviously they're going to be active high because they have no inversion bubbles. These two inputs are active low because they have inversion bubbles. All right. Cool. All right. Uh, the presence or absence of the inversion bubble determines the active high or active low status of the inputs or the outputs. Okay? When a logic signal is active in, the, in its active state, it is said to be asserted. It's just a bit of uh, uh, information that, uh, that you can use later. All right. Active logic levels. All right, so here we have the uh, here we have the NAND gate. All right, uh, so um, what do we have here? And then we have an OR gate with the inverted uh, inputs. All right. Uh, so um, what do we have? These two are active. Output goes low when all inputs are high. Okay. Normally, if there was no inversion bubble. This would uh, this would be the other way, all right? So and look at this thing here. You can also analyze that. So it's just something to kind of uh, uh, put your brain on the right track of uh, the way of thinking uh, in the right world of or, of what we're talking about here. Okay. Now uh, synchronous versus asynchronous. We talked about that a little bit uh, last time, uh, and this is another spin on that. All right. Uh, well, in short words. The synchronous versus asynchronous, okay? Just a simple AND gate. There's an output and it has two inputs. Whatever happens on the inputs, it's going to happen immediately on the outputs. There's no way to control that. So it's an asynchronous device, not synchronized by anything. Uh, if we put some control uh, pin or control input to that device, then it could be controlled by something uh, or synchronized by something. And usually it's, uh, it's called a clock input and the clock just, it's basically a, well, a stable multi-vibrator uh, output um, that, is, that basically goes high and low with certain frequency. And usually those are control pins that are controlling multiple devices at the same time. And those devices can use the input from the clock. So maybe that's why um, uh, this, those devices are called synchronous devices because they can be synchronized or call, controlled by some other thing, uh, whether it's an enable or disable pin or it's a clock. It usually that refers to a clock input, okay? So um, uh, so let's see what it says here. The system that uh, uh, the exact times at which the outputs will change are determined by the signal called a clock. That's for the 
uh, for the synchronous operation of a device. Again, the system that the exact times at which the outputs will change are set by a, or determined by a signal called a clock signal. The clock signal is usually distributed to the whole system. It's the heartbeat of digital circuitry. Usually the changes occur, it should be changes here, the changes occur on the clock transitions. So that tells us that, uh, that most of the digital circuitry that is being used, there would utilize edge triggered, um, edge triggered uh, uh, inputs. Okay? So we go positive going transition or negative going transition. So it's just a positive edge or negative edge. PGT, NGT, positive going transition, negative going transition. Now, and then there's that asynchronous. Uh, asynchronous is basically not synchronized with anything, not synchronizable, not controllable. And outputs immediately change when one or more of the inputs change, uh, namely lack of timing. Right, so there's, well, you understand what that is. Uh, basically, if you have the device, as soon as something changes, the output reacts immediately, and there is no way to make it stop or control it or tell the device to ignore the inputs until the enable pin is, uh, is activated or so. Yeah. All right, uh, so terminologies, active high, active low, rising edge, falling edge, level trigger, edge trigger. This is something that we already have uh, talked about the last time. Yes, please. Uh, can you explain the clock transition once again, please? Oh, the clock transition? Yeah. Um, okay, so the clock would be a signal. Like let's say you have a big circuitry going on and it, and it involves performing a bunch of operations. This is kind of like something further that we're going to discuss or, or you're going to discuss after this course. But just imagine a whole big board that involves many different sub circuits uh, that are supposed to perform uh, different operations. And uh, most of the operations are, uh, are clock dependent something has to make that thing work. Just like you have a heartbeat in your body, okay? Um, you need, basically, we need to have our hearts beating for us to exist, okay? Because things are being, you know, based on the heartbeats, our whole life happens here, okay? So the same thing here. Uh, um, usually it's one, sometimes it's one, sometimes there are multiple clocks in the system because different devices can use multiple different clocks. But it's, it's just for the simplicity of things, uh, consider there's one clock. And that clock is basically a square wave going up and down all the time, just pulsating, right? giving you pulses or it could be level signals but usually there'll be pulses because if you have narrow pulses you can make that thing go faster right so you can make that thing the the frequency of the clock faster and uh, so so basically that clock uh applies to the whole system and whatever we can uh, you, uh whatever the device we have it could be an integrated circuit this integrated circuit that whatever all the device they could use that clock to perform their operations. Okay, so that's uh, that's that's the control uh, level. As we go along, um, it's better that uh, just just follow the uh, for this one. Uh, just uh, follow this presentation here as I'm doing, and I think we're going to get to that. And 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 um, if you need further explanations, just by all means, let me know. That's as far as I can. Um, explain that right now without going to the further slides, okay? So let's just keep going here. Now, general symbol for a latch or a flip-flop. So here over here is you have a, um, well, black box, okay? Now, this is a giveaway a little bit because uh, it, it shows like a FF for sort of a flip-flop. Uh, but, uh, okay, so it has multiple inputs. Usually it's like two, all right? Uh, but this one, can have more than two, right? And you can have more than two outputs, but this one here's the simple, simplest uh, uh, form. It will be Q. And over here we have the not Q. So that suggests that at all times, 
if this is one, this has to be zero. And if this is zero, then this has to be one. That's the idea of Q and not Q. In this kind of scenario here with this device, there is an invalid state of both of them being the same. We cannot have it, it's illegal in this one here, sort of, nobody's gonna sue you, but it's illegal technically. Uh, uh, you, you will never have both ones or both zeros in this type of device, right? So uh, if Q goes one, the not Q is zero. And then if Q goes zero, the not Q is one, all right? So it has more than one input uh, and normally two outputs, Q, normal output, and the not Q is the inverted output. So that's the idea of a latch or a flip-flop, okay? And the clock more or less applies more to the flip-flop than to a latch. Okay, so I'm just I just keep in mind that you asked me that question. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to uh, um, hover around that. Okay. All right. So now here is an SR latch with NAND gates. All right. So if you connect, if you connect this uh, um, two NAND gates in this way. Here's the truth table you're going to accomplish. And what do we have here by the truth table, with the truth table? And there's also a synchrogram just to, uh, to, to, to show the timings and stuff. So let's just concentrate on this. Here. So we have two NAND gates, right? Uh, one, in, one of the inputs is considered as an input to the whole device because there's a device made out of two NAND gates. And there's one of those inputs for the other one is considered to be another input. We call this one set and we call this one reset, all right? And then we have two outputs, one is Q and one is not Q. Let's see, what kind of combinations can we have? Uh, we can have zero, 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 one, one, zero, and one, one, all right? So we're going from the bottom, okay? Uh, so <clears throat> in this here, if we have both of those inputs, zero, then we enter something that's called invalid state, okay? They're both going to try to become either high or both are going to try to become either low. And we just cannot have that. You can analyze it step by step. If we have zero here and zero here and zero here, that is going to give us one here. That's going to go one. Or is it this one going to give us one here? Or is that going to give us one here? There's no way to predict what the output is going to be. All right. Uh, so it could go either one zero or it could go zero one or it could be just uh, going nuts on us, right? So we never should have anything any at any point. These two out, these two inputs should never be both zeros. Right? But what can they be uh, here? If one of them, so let's say if set here, which is this one here, if set is one, then the Q goes one, right? and then not Q goes zero. And if you have the other one, then we have the, the, the other one zero. So at any point, so if you can tell that, that this device is pretty much pulse triggered. Right? If you have both of them as one, it is going to retain the previous state of whatever it was. That's what it says, no change. So if this one was zero and this one was one, right? and from whatever state, if we have one zero or zero one, if we make the other one one, it's going to retain the output of a previous state. Right? So uh, now, if we have both of them at one, it's waiting for the instructions, right? And if we apply, whoops, if we apply signal, so this is, um, this would be a low active uh, device, right? If we briefly bring this one to zero and come back, bringing it to zero, it's going to give us this one, this Q, it's gonna set it high. And then we come back to one, it's going to retain the previous state. 
So we just click on that and bring it back. And it's going to retain the information. Now, if we go the other one, the reset, bring to zero and come back, it's going to set the Q to one and the not Q to zero. And when we come back, it's going to stay that way. I have uh, set this, set something up here uh, on a multi-SIM. Look at that. I'm going to demonstrate just this scenario here. So SR latch. Here's the truth table. Zero is involved. I just inverted the truth table. Okay. So both ones, we're going to have a previous state, whatever it was. And if we apply a negative pulse to one or negative pulse to other one, it is going to uh, it is going to change into whatever we want. So here, let us. Um, I'm just going to press the play button here on the multi sim, uh, which means that this is uh, the simulation is is uh, working. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to try to bring it to the full screen here. All right. So now what we have one and one, whatever previously was there is going to stay there. Okay. Now I'm going to bring the set to zero and come back. Okay. And see what happens. Zero. That gives us Q one. I'm going to come back to one because it's a pulse. So like that. And it says one. Let's see if, if we momentarily bring the reset to zero and come back. Well, I pretty much guess what's going to happen. This, these two are going to reverse. So I'm going to turn it on and turn it off. So I'm applying, I'm applying a pulse. There you go. So this thing has changed. So we always keep it at one. In this particular one, there will be devices that you want to keep it at zero, and then you apply positive pulses. This one, you apply negative pulses, okay? Again, let's flip that. So set is going to give us Q as one, all right? So uh, pulse and come back, okay? Switches. And then pulse and come back and switches. And pulse and come back. So latches are more or less, uh, well, pretty much latches should be operated, uh, triggered by pulses, okay? Now, I can see that this is 11.54, uh, so um, uh, you know what? We're going to wrap it up, uh, and we're going to pick it up uh, next time we see each other. Um, so uh, I, yeah, I just don't want to go on and make you come back and watch this. Uh, what, what you can do is uh, download the presentation, the, the presentation, the um, post-it notes, uh, and then you can just analyze it. And then we're briefly going to go through it and we're going to get some examples uh, later on. Okay, so um, yeah, so I wasn't able to answer fully on uh, what the clock is about. So I would just say whoever asked that, I don't remember. Uh, but please, uh, please follow the uh, follow me when uh, when we uh, when we meet next time. Uh, bit by bit, uh, I'm going to give you more information that is going to make the whole sense of, of, of uh, it's going to make a whole bunch of sense. All right, um, what app are you using? Um, this is a this is called MultiSim. All right, yeah, MultiSim. Right. It is called multi-sim. Watch the video that uh, that I did. This is how you use it. That software is installed in homework labs. That software should be also installed in the open lab room for us to, to, to use. Anybody, your student card works there. It's a, it's a locked entry, but your student card works there. You can get in there. You're welcome to stay there. Just, you know, uh, needless to say keep things nice and tidy so nobody complains about anything and things are going to go smooth right if we get out of things out of things get out of hand uh, then they're going to close it on us right so uh, so yeah so those software just just watch that video try to recreate that there's also a bunch of instructions things that multi sim thing is a wonderful thing uh, is it, it might help you with analyzing circuits uh, uh, in various ways 
of course there is nothing nothing like the real thing but uh, you can use that software as a helping tool to understand better things and you can make things, fa make things faster and, uh, and, and you don't have to buy parts you can just plug them in on the screen and simulate them will you post the lecture notes on youtube uh no i'm, I'm posting the lecture notes on the on fol all right so uh, just go to the content and give me about 10 minutes or so uh i'm just going to uh save that in pdf uh and um uh, and post it for you okay all right so uh guys i'm going to see you whenever i see you uh which is probably going to be a week from now and uh by all means if somebody has a question about anything uh feel free to contact me uh through my email here okay and i'll do my best to answer any of your questions all right thanks sir. thank you thank you very much and uh good luck on your next class here have a good one thank you good luck thank you